See you later, Hurley. I'm staying with Winoski. He's much cooler than you. Yeah. Got the sidekick. Well, it looks like you're on your own today, Runo. But chin up. You can do it. Wait, what do you mean I'm on my own? Oh, what about you, Iris? I know, I'm afraid I can't help. I have something I need to do. I tricked you, didn't I? I just said two seconds ago that I was going to stay and help you because I thought you were cool. Ha! Just kidding. You suck. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am the Story Driven Gamer, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're hopping back into the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. Last episode, we got to visit Madame Trustbell's um, Wax Museum, and I was not expecting that. I mean, that's where we left off the previous episode that we were going there, but it felt so random at the time. But we learned a lot of stuff that, you know, I don't know all the pieces yet. I haven't put them all together, obviously, but we found out that, um, that was it, that a wax uh, figure was stolen that belonged to the professor. Well, the wax figure itself didn't belong to the professor, but it was a wax figure of the professor, who was apparently this, uh, mass murderer, I think 10 years ago. They said that he was, uh, doing his thing, or either, either 10 years ago he was, you know, Murdering people. It might have been that ten years ago was when he died. I think it was that. I think it was that. Ten years ago he died. Um, and so they made a wax figure because this is a messed up sort of horror section of the museum. So it's full of like mass murder wax figures of mass murderers and stuff. So that's a thing. And we found out that that connects to what happened with Van Zykes and his complete 180 and his like you know his attitude. Going from this easygoing, nice guy to this, you know, ruthless prosecutor. Uh, apparently, the, the professor had killed his brother. And... Because that's what the professor did. He, like, went after, like, nobility and stuff. So, you know, Van Zykes was from a noble family. Um, that was the bulk, that was the bulk of it, um, I feel. The inter there was apparently a, there was a cop at the scene of, at the museum... But we didn't talk to him or anything, so I don't know if we'll see him. We might see him in uh, in the trial. Maybe he'll be a witness that's called up or something. Again, I have no idea how this wax figure stuff, the wax figure going missing, the professor, what any of that has to do with, um, you know, Asmin and um, Bunny Brain. Um, but I'm sure we'll find out. My my sort of pie in the sky um, theory, or guess, it's more like a guess, is that. I was trying to think like how the wax figure could uh, possibly have to do with anything and the only thing that came to me I think I said in the last video was that maybe maybe like the wax there was some, some kind of switcheroo and the wax figure was actually put in place of Asmin into you know into the machine and it was the wax figure that was shot through the uh, the building and Asmin's maybe hiding out somewhere I don't know <laughs> again just some just a random guess based solely on just the fact that I'm trying to figure out what this figurine could have to do with anything, but, um, yeah, that's all I got, so let's, let's dive into the, uh, first trial of the case. Here we are. 23rd of October, 8.52 a.m., the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Back to this familiar site. Oh, I, well, I guess I, I wouldn't say I just realized that those uh, scales were there, but... I, I guess I didn't make the connection. That's the scales of justice. Just never really thought about it. I can't believe it's been six months since I was last allowed to work in court. And now here I am, back at the old Bailey. That's right, because we are back in the present now. The last case was, uh, you know, a flashback case. And the case before that, we were playing a Suzuto in Japan, so... This is the first time we are playing present day Ryanosuke and he's now allowed to practice law again. Which is awesome. Look who it is, Hairbrain. Ah, Mr. Narahoto! Good morning, Professor Hairbrain. Bunnyhead. I, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. The atmospheric pressure in here is off the charts. I've never felt anything like it. It's, it's crushing me. Calm down, buddy. I feel it every time I'm here. That gravity gives me nightmares. Well, this is Britain's highest court. But are you telling me it's fitted with some kind of device that can actually control air pressure? <laughs> Not what I meant. I think it's probably all in the mind. Ah, yes, well. 
You won't let me down, will you, Mr. Naruhodo? I'll try. <laughs> I'm counting on you in today's trial. To save my life. No pressure or anything. To save the secret of my super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine from being made public. Yes, I understand. I know what I have to do. I have to establish that the explosion two days ago was nothing more than an unfortunate accident. Well, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about, really. Justice will prevail! I hope. Uh, my commiseration, Mr. Narahodo, you appear to have been lumbered with the most tiresome case here. I don't think that's uh, Van Zyke's. <laughs> okay, I, I, I should have figured. Mr. Sholmes, I didn't expect to see you here. And Iris! That was very mean, Runo! Leave me alone at home with Hurley! It took me at least an hour to wake him up! Ah! Uh, Oh, uh, is it... are you... can I get your autograph? Herlock Sholmes! It is I. Indeed, sir. I am he. Herlock Sholmes, as you put it. Oh, I've heard all about your exploits, even whilst living in Germany. Oh yes, Ranch Magazine is on sale in Germany too. This month's installment was sublime. Your deduction in the adventure of Silver Blades was wonderful. Well, at least you're in better spirits now. Ah, yes, a memorable case indeed. It concerned a snake, I seem to recall. No, that was the Speckled Band. Ah, I, I remember that one. Wasn't that the second case of the last game? Because the Speckled Band had to do with, uh, we thought it had to do with a snake. But it had to do with, uh, that, li that Russian ballerina's dog. Well, thank you for coming. I do appreciate your support. I had nothing better to do. I'm sorry to disappoint you, my dear fellow, but I'm afraid I can't stay. Oh, of course. <laughs> sorry to get your hopes up. Oh. Should have guessed. I have urgent business. I've bought a tusk bells. <laughs> We're getting jiggity tonight. You mean your waxwork job? You could call it that, yes. No, no, the waxwork abduction, of course. Madam has engaged my services. Ah, so you're trying to go to the bottom of that ransom note, are you? The week's wages depend on it, as is the safe return of the waxwork naturally. As such, I intend to give him my undivided attention. Oh, well, never mind then. I understand. I mean, I'd chew you out, but I can't blame you. I'd, I'd want to... I'd rather be uh, in Miss Trustbell's uh, company than be here, so... Of course, with my skills of observation and re reasoning, resolving the matter will be as easy as proverbial pie. I shall return forthwith. For until I solve the case, I shall have no money to afford a pie of any description. Aha. Oh, then you must absolutely give it your full attention, Hurley. Are you going to stay with me, Iris? Quite, Iris, quite. But life is riddled with irony, you know. Whenever I give something my full attention, I have a quite insatiable desire for a pie. One of the universe's intractable mysteries, you might say. Sure. I couldn't agree more. Oh yes, quite definitely. Absolutely. I totally understand. Is someone a little starstruck? I wish you the very best of luck, Professor Hairbrain. Oh, uh, uh, why thank you. Before I depart, Mr. Nohodo, a word in your ear, if you please. What's this about? As you have remarkably little sorry, as you have remarkably little grounding in science, I feel ought to inform you. As compelling as the super high voltage instantaneous kinesis hypothesis may be, a practical implementation such as was attempted by the professor at the Great Exhibition is quite impossible. Okay. Okay, she's talking about the professor, he's talking about okay. I don't know, he said the professor, and I was thinking he was talking about the professor. <laughs> you know, the one that we found, the wax, the wax guy. But the professor said the demonstration was a success. Was it, though? Yes, it would appear that he fervently believed it was. I read Professor Bunny Brain's paper about it, too, Runo. And I have to say, I'm sure it can't be done. It could barely be done theoretically, let alone practically. So my theory, like I said, is he thinks that 
because he wound up across, you know, across of the the way, across to the other building. That means that it worked. But obviously he was supposed to be like, I guess, reconstructed and literally teleported to the other building. What I think is that he was somehow f uh, flown, like um, catapulted, that's the word I'm looking for, over to the building maybe. I don't know how that would have happened, but... So he's completely barking up the wrong tree. He is barking mad! But how could an experiment that had no possibility of succeeding in fact succeed? That's contradictory. And it's up to us to point out those contradictions. And we will. And it's that contradiction that will be at the heart of the trial, I've no doubt. What's that supposed to mean? Now I must hurry along. I wish you the best of luck, my dear fellow. See you later, Hurley. I'm staying with Winosuke, he's much cooler than you. Yeah, got my sidekick. Well, it looks like you're on your own today, Runo. But chin up, you can do it. Wait, what do you mean I'm on my own? Oh, what about you, Iris? I know, I'm afraid I can't help. I have something I need to do. See, I tricked you, didn't I? I just said two seconds ago that I was going to stay and help you because I thought you were cool. Ha, just kidding. You suck. Thanks. I see. Hehe, <laughs> it's going to be a big surprise for you when you find out what it is. Ha, <sighs> that sounds ominous, but good luck with that. Counsel for the defense and the defendant. Court is about to be in session. Make your way into the courtroom at once. Run away! Okay, you got this, Rianosuke. We got this. We did pretty good in the last case. An experiment that the laws of science say can't possibly succeed. And a scientist who's convinced that it did. That's the riddle you have to unlock here, Rianosuke. That's the key to this case. So... We'll see if my little theory, I'm sure there's more to it than what I said, but we'll see if it has, if it holds any weight. 23rd of October, 9.10 a.m., the Old Bailey courtroom. Ah, here we are, the, what a familiar sight. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are sitting today for the public trial of Professor Albert Harebrain. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is ready. I am ready with my Dracula cosplay. Per usual. The defense is... The defense is ready, my lord, I think. I'm six months out of practice. And what's more... Hey! I'm without Suzuto-san today. I'm without Suzuto-san who is wearing... He was wearing this weird idol outfit in my in my vision for some reason. So that reminded me actually. What what I was gonna do about that is I'm just gonna leave Suzuto in the idol outfit for the entirety of this case. And um, if we don't see Suzuto in any meaningful way except for these little bits, you know, these little pieces we've seen, I'll just leave it on for the next chapter and hope hope that she is actually in it, <laughs> more involved in it. And then, um, I'll just save, uh, I'll switch into Sherlock's outfit, or Sholmes' outfit, for the, uh, the very last case. Ugh. Is this my imagination, or does the air in here feel even more oppressive than usual? So, I must say I recollect the victim of this case all too well. Mr. Odie Asman. Mr. Asman was known as a financier. Though that was merely a front for his d diverse criminal activities. It was only a month ago that the man appeared in court prosecuted by Lord Van Zykes. But the jury unanimously found him not guilty. Because every member of the jury had been bribed by the sound of it. That's right, we... Obviously, this isn't a trial we partook in, but it, um... We heard about it. These powerful London criminals are prepared to go to extreme lengths to keep their freedom. But two days ago, on 21st of October, Mr. Asman met his end. The work of the Reaper, was it? No comment. If that is how your lordship would describe divine retribution. But the fact remains that Mr. Asman's death was the direct result of the actions of the accused, Professor Hairbrain, my BFF. Very well then. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, 
You have been selected at random to present the will of the people. You've been selected at random, so let's see how many of you are the same jury we have in every single case. Luck would have it. Are the six of you ready to fulfill your societal duty? Oh gosh. Okay, you're new. I'm most gratified to have been selected to carry out this important civic duty, my lord. To have a man's fate in the palm of one's hand? Oh gosh, oh golly, it sends shivers down my spine. Okay, now we got some new people. I take back what I said. Science experiments, magic conjuring tricks, courtroom trials are nothing more than performances. Any spurious scholar that defies the reputation of science deserves to hang. Um, we have to listen to what's said on both sides of the fence and um, then settle on one. That's it, isn't it? No, 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 Okay. That's, that's not going to be annoying. <laughs> oh, that's the policeman, right? Still sleeping, I see. Okay. So he's a juror. That's interesting. So I'm sure he's going to... Wasn't like this in my day. Wasn't like this at all. That's... That's... The police killer Adamo lookalike. Again. And he's as exhausted as ever, it seems. I'm sure he's going to be important. Okay, so we actually have a entirely new selection of jurors. Okay, cool. I'm down with that. Although it means six new voices or however many jurors there are. Now, as I'm sure you are all aware, the incident we are here to judge today tragically took place at the Great Exhibition shortly after its opening. Though the death toll could have been far worse, with the exception of the victim, no one was killed. Good. Nevertheless, the dream of the science being exhibited rapidly turned into a nightmare for the spectators. A tragic turn of events. And as such, the eyes of all London, no, the whole world, will be on this trial. It's a big one. It's a doozy. It is our duty to reach a short and just conclusion, I feel. So, your opening statement, please, Lord Van Zykes. Okay. At the heart of this incident, is technology never before demonstrated anywhere in the world. One of science's latest developments, I take it. The government is keen to capitalize on the Great Exhibition to improve Britain's technological advantage. The technology being demonstrated by the accused was described as super high voltage instantaneous kinesis. Good lord! I have no idea what that means. It's designed to disassemble human subjects using extremely high voltage electricity and beam them instantly to another location where they are subsequently reassembled. Also known as teleportation. Is, is such a thing within even within the realm of possibility? Well, I don't believe it, that's for sure. Disassembling people with electricity? My goodness, how shocking! Ha! The whole idea is absurd. The hypothesis would never stand up to scrutiny. Sure, I believe you are a fellow of the Royal Society, are you not? An expert in your field. Oh, yeah, and my word on the matter can be considered final. Instantaneous kinesis is poppycock! So this expert and Mr. Sholmes are in agreement. It's impossible. <laughs> that makes your job a lot harder. What is the prosecution's view on the matter? I don't know what's going on. The prosecution would assert, as I point my little finger, that the accused instantaneous kinesis demonstration was a success. What? What what? Puffy cop. Order, order. The professor's hypothesis is currently under investigation by the British government. If it is deemed to have merit, a substantial research grant would be made available. The accused made use of the invention built on his new hypothesis to take Mr. Asman's life in order to be the sole benefactor of the grant. Hmm. Monetary gain. A motive as old as time. But, but... Slam! This disastrous demonstration was no accident. It was carefully designed from the outset to end the life of the victim. Okay, so when he's saying it's a success, he's saying, like, it did what it was intended to do. 
which was to get to kill Azamin. Thank you, Lord Van Zykes. The prosecution's stance is clear. But you will now bring forth witnesses to substantiate your claims. Gladly, my lord. Who do we got? Ah, the cape comes off already. Bailiff, show your first witnesses to the stand. Here we go. Out oh, here, Brandon himself and Gregson. Witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court. Yes, sir. Tobias Gregson, Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard's Homicide Division. I was on duty at the demonstration on the day in question and in charge of the following investigation. <laughs> what the? Albert Herbrace is a scientist! Okay then. Thanks for that. You were born in England, but we've been carrying out research in Germany in recent years, correct? Yes. Yes, that's right. After graduating from university here in Britain, I went to work in Germany and made an amazing discovery. Which is what brought me back. I had to demonstrate my incredible hypothesis at the Great Exhibition. What you demonstrated was incredible, all right. An incredible explosion. Ha ha. Wait, this is no laughing matter. But the science, the science was a success. The instantaneous kinesis worked. <laughs> Everyone saw it. They must have done. Yes, there was the terrible accident, but who cares? I mean, what? The demonstration of my hypothesis was a success. Calm down, Bill Nye. Well, that's as much as undeniable, as shown in this photograph taken by the forensic investigation team. Let's see it. Oh, dang. Okay, so we do have a picture of the body. This was taken inside the crystal tower, I take it? The centerpiece of the exhibition, no less. That's right, my lord. She and the victim rammed straight into it. Hmm, I see. Very well. Submit the photograph as evidence. Okay. And see, again, that's why I don't think it worked the way it's supposed to. Like, like if he was teleported... He would um, he wouldn't have like gone through a window, or he would have like teleported like, I guess I guess if he teleported like, in the window, you know like literally in the window. I don't know. It just seemed like I said. It seems like this body was maybe flung across the uh, <laughs> which is a painful way to go. Like maybe the ex um, maybe the explosion was just so forceful that it just flung his body across. I mean the interesting thing is well. We'll take a look at the picture in a moment. A photographic print of the victim taken after he had ostensibly been de-beamed to the Crystal Tower. It shows an apparent stab wound to the chest. Okay, well that's kind of vital. I didn't talk about that yet. Let me, let's take a look at it. Yeah, so I mean, obviously there's a stab wound present. And so, if he didn't have a stab wound going into the machine, you know, Hairbrain did the thing and the explosion is supposed to be what killed him. How do you explain that? Okay, I see glass. Don't see if there's anything else unusual about the body itself. Nothing I can see, anyway. But yeah, obviously right now the biggest thing is the uh, gunshot wound. Wait, no, stab wound. Wait, what is it? What do they say it is? Stab wound. Okay. Did I read this? At the court, her, the victim of the incident was Mr. Udi Asman. There have been a number of allegations made against this man. We put them aside for the time being. He was the man who found us the research and the experiment and the demonstration itself. I see. So to summarize the situation, the defendant is accused of taking the life of the man who funded his work. Would that be correct? Exactly. But couldn't it be that the explosion was caused by some malfunction in the apparatus used for the demonstration? That's right! That must be it! My splendid machine! My poor, splendid machine! How could it... How could it fail me so? You saw it yesterday, didn't you? We can't even examine the records thanks to the Special Dispensa... Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act? What? The wreckage? The wreckage? Yes, the wreckage. But that being the case, how can the facts be established? How can it possibly be determined whether this was an accident or a deliberate and malicious act? Extremely simply, my lord. Okay, do tell. 
I beg your pardon? Isn't that right? Witness? What? Sorry, me? He has no idea what's going on. <laughs> no, your neighbor. Oh, Gregson. Yes, sir. It was murder, plain and simple. Anyone could state that with complete certainty. What? How can he possibly think that? Thank you, Inspector. I think we'd better proceed to formal testimony. You explain to the court on what ground you claim this experiment to have been a front for murder. If they're going to talk about the stab wound, I don't know if you can even make that case, because... Granted, I don't remember exactly how the, uh... Like, how the framing was, how Asmund got into the machine, but I think he just... Asmund walked into the machine, and Hairbrain ran to, like, the other side, and was pulling, like, levers and stuff, right? So, in other words, it's not like, uh... I don't think, uh... Hairbrain helped Asmund into the machine, so you... Otherwise, you could argue maybe he was stabbed right before... You know... Maybe he was, like, stabbed and locked in the machine before, uh, you know, he, he turned it on or whatever. Front for murder! The corpse that went crashing through the crystal tower had a broken neck. I, I made a minor miscalculation in the angle of the beam projection, that's all. That was my mistake. Lots of mistakes going on, here, Brain. But the post-mortem examination revealed another injury, a fatal wound. There was a lesion on his chest where he'd clearly been stabbed by something sharp right in the heart. So the victim was killed before he went anywhere. And this fella is the only one who could have done it. Okay. I mean, true, but... How are we going to prove this? Or how are we going to, you know, refute that? An extraordinary business. Guilty AF. Time for lunch. In addition to suffering a broken neck, the victim was stabbed in the heart. Information I would really like to have heard from someone other than the judge. So see, the broken neck, I could see having to do with, you know, him, the explosion and him, if he was flung across the room, he might have just landed in a way that snapped his neck. I don't know if we're going to find out that the broken neck was uh, post-mortem, like if that was after his death. But the stab wound, obviously, you can't explain away so easily. <laughs> The coroner says death would have been all but instant from a wound like that. You could say, in fact, that the victim was killed twice by the accused. No. No and no. That couldn't be further from the truth. I believe you, bunny brain. I have here the experiment plan document that was submitted to the security team. Okay. The victim stood himself inside something called the bird cage, ready to be beamed instantly. To the second level of the crystal tower, about 25 yards away. The experiment did not go according to plan, however. As the machine was put into operation, there was a large explosion. Ah, okay, that's why I was aiming up. The blast caused the beam transmitted a point higher than intended. Ah, okay. Accordingly, the kinesis resulted in the birdcage materializing in midair. Ah, and then he fell. Ah, okay. From where it subsequently fell crashing through the glass of the crystal tower's large round window. Okay. Now getting some more details on how it actually happened. But I'm curious to know how do they, like, do they actually see it happen that way? My word, one assumed the victim's neck was broken upon impact with the tower, then? I'm, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean for this to happen. The machine was just too powerful. But honestly, really, I swear, it was just an accident, a terrible accident. Unfortunately, that excuse can't save you. You will die. No, not considering the sharp murder weapon that pierced the victim's heart. M murder weapon? W what are you saying? This is the autopsy report submitted by the coroner. The prosecution would like it entered into the court record. Your request is granted, counsel. The autopsy report of the victim, Mr. Asman. His neck was broken from the impact of a violent fall, and he was stabbed in the chest with a sharp object. Yes. Let's go ahead and read that more thoroughly. Old oh, and person, you know. I saw the whole ludicrous performance. And the only other person on the stage was Mr. Asman. 
with that disgraceful excuse for a scientist. Then really, by all accounts, it must have been him. <laughs> Hard to think otherwise, really. Okay, right, I gotta, before I forget, let's look. Yeah, so let's look at this. Two pages. Autopsy report, coroner Courtney Scythe. Ah, huh, a female coroner. I don't know if that's common. Details of victim, Odie As... Excuse me. Details of victim. Name, Odie Asman, male. Age 47. Nationality, British. Time of death, 21st of October, around 2.20pm. Okay. Cause of death. Hemorrhage of a wound to the chest that pierced the heart, inflicted by a sharp implement. Doesn't say a knife, specifically. And I don't know if there was a knife at the scene. Additional observations. A broken vertebra most likely resulting from impact after a sudden fall from considerable height. Okay, nothing appears out of the ordinary. That seems exactly like what they said. Very well, counsel for the defense. Proceed with the course examination, please. Oh. Yes, my lord. I need to focus here. Slap them cheeks! It's been a while. Give those cheeks a double slap if you need to. Let's do this! A front for murder! Okay. The corpse that went crashing through the crystal tower has a broken neck. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Made a minor miscalculation. Okay. Post-mortem examination revealed another injury, a fatal wound. Okay, I want to press him on that. That seems important. The defense knew nothing of this crucial information. The prosecution received this report from the forensics investigation team only this morning. That was the first we knew of it as well. I can only apologize for the impossibility of informing the defense. Sarcastic and insincere. Thanks. So, what was the nature of this sharp object? Among the accused tools that were in use at the demonstration, one is of particular interest. This. With us. I think we saw that during the investigation. Ah, oh, dang it. Ah! There he is! I always have to interject commentary when, when it auto scrolls. Oh, yes, that would appear to be some kind of screwdriver, wouldn't it count? See, if I read that, my question would have been answered. It is a screwdriver. My trusty little companion, Andrew! Okay, that's not necessary. Andrew, of course. Of course, crazy pants over here would name his uh, tools. Ah, do you know each other already? He's one of my dear friends, like all my tools. I've been in the mall, you know? We're one big happy family. That's great. Andrew is my flat-headed screwdriver, of course. His brother Michael is a crosshead. Yes, all my friends are tools, too. Like Ryanosuke over there. Aha! Get it? Shut up, Judge. Well, it would appear that your beloved Andrew has a red stain on his shank. <laughs> ah, that... That isn't... It's blood. Beyond all reasonable doubt. Oh, that's not good. No. And that's not whole. Okay, you can, you can um, you can stop smiling, uh, hair brain. <laughs> That's not good for you. Long, sharp shape of this Andrew fellow is completely consistent with the victim's wound. What? What? There you go. Now you're taking it seriously. Order, order. The court will enter this friend of the defendant as evidence. Okay. Already got some new evidence. Professor Hairbrain's trusty screwdriver that he's named Andrew. There are traces of blood at the tip and it matches the shape of the victim's wound. So one of Professor Hairbrain's tools is the murder weapon. Great. <laughs> anything, anything to make our life that much harder. Let's take a closer look at it, shall we? This is blood. Mr. Asmund's, no doubt. This is the problem with looking at murder weapons. <laughs> That's all you had to say? Okay, this is in the shape of an A. 
Hence why I named it Andrew. I've seen this unusually shaped handle before. It's the same screwdriver that was lodged in the grill on the floor of the Kinesis machine. Which could be important information, so I should definitely make a note of it. Okay. A metal screwdriver that was found poking through the grill in the base of what remains of the Kinesis machine. It has a very distinctive handle. I'm trying to think what that could mean. Are you saying that it was at the base of the machine, so you're saying that he couldn't have used it to stab Asmin? I guess that would make sense, right? Let me press some of these points too. Are you suggesting that's because he fell from a considerable height? Exactly. Which highlights something else about this whole rum business. What's that? The fact that the instantaneous kinesis itself was a success. Ah! After the explosion, the cage with the fella inside suddenly appeared out of nowhere in midair. So, although the experiment ended in disaster, the so called instantaneous kinesis did actually occur. Remind us, Professor. What was the cause of the fatal disaster? So, what if. What if going off of my theory that the, um. That they put, like, the wax figure was. Was what was actually put into the machine? What if somebody had already killed Asmin way ahead of time? And, like, the wax figure was put in the machine? And then just as he, um. You know, he used it. What if somebody just. I don't know how, from like a helicopter or something, they dropped the body from above into the crystal tower. Like two separate incidences? I don't know. Let's see. So the angle of projection is critical, is it? And you calculated it yourself personally? Absolutely! The calculation is far too complicated for anyone but me to carry out! Only you got it wrong, didn't you? Yes, that's right! That's the point. The calculation is so complicated, even I can make a mistake. People fall for that brazen confidence. <laughs> I should try it. I, I took into account the subject height and weight, and the wind direction, the ambient temperature. I considered every possible variable, so I just don't understand how this could have happened. Obviously, then, you had to include the weight of the clothes Mr. Asmund was wearing at the time, I suppose? Ah! Is that a thing? <laughs> Whoopsie doodles. Crackling comments. The answer should have been three. So much for safety first. The three must be for safety third. Aha! I get it, Ryanosuke. Very good. So that's all the testimony I have to work with. I had no idea the victim had been stabbed. That changes everything. Fansex keep that to himself until now on purpose to gain the advantage? Oh well, I suppose all I can do is press these witnesses for as much new information as possible. Okay. So I'm gonna go with that theory and I'm gonna keep pressing him. Another fatal injury, you say? Slam! That doesn't make any sense! I didn't think I'd have to spell this out, but here we go! Just because there were two fatal wounds. Doesn't mean I'm saying the victim had two lives to lose, does it? Too right. Makes sense to me. Obviously at first we thought the bloke had died due to his spine snapping in half as well. But you're saying that's not the case. You'll get your answer once I finish my fish and chips. If you don't keep butting in every few seconds, I'm trying to eat here. But we all know that's a bottomless bag. <laughs> you've, you've been eating from the same bag since the start of the series. The victim plummeted 30 feet into a glass tower. Would be reasonable to assume that was the cause of death. Right. Is that what we all thought? But it was a red herring, wasn't it? Hold it. Check this out. The defense knew nothing of this crucial information. The force Oh, wait a minute. I did this already. Sorry. Hey, my bad. This is the last thing to examine. What grounds do you have for saying that? Ha! Huh. Do you really need to ask? There are only two people on the public experimentation stage in front of the whole crowd. The victim, Mr. Udi Asman, and the accused, Professor Hairbrain. 
Can we know for certain that before the experiment, the victim was alive? That's right, I saw my own eyes. Furthermore, following the explosion in Kinesis, nobody went anywhere near the body. In other words, only someone else on stage with the victim could possibly have done it. Great Scott indeed, what do you gotta say? Excuse me. Pardon me, good sir. Professor Harebrain, do you have some information that may be relevant here? Anything you'd like to share with the rest of the class? <laughs> what do you got? Professor! Not the not to be confused with the professor, just professor. Hey, 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 uh, sorry, sorry. Scribble, scribble, scribble. I was just calculating the optimum coefficient of el electrolysis to separate molecules in the human body. And the way the stand is the best place for that? Is it? I don't think so. It seemed as though you might have something to say. About Inspector Gregson's last remark. Ah! <laughs> ah! Yes! Yes, that's right! Of course! He just said that nobody else could have done it, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Who else could have stabbed the victim, eh? I don't know, but... Not me. There's no way I could possibly have stabbed Mr. Asman, as you say. Eh? Explain, please, Professor. Of course, this cold-hearted policeman may not be aware, I suppose. But humans are warm-blooded mammals with blood running continuously through their veins. I had heard. Rumor has it. Then surely you see. If I plunged something the size of Andrew into the man's chest, the whole stage would have been a bloodbath, now a blood swimming pool. Ah, but thousands of Londoners were watching me at the time. And yet not one of them claims to have seen a swimming pool of blood. I mean, there definitely should have been blood present. Well, no, I suppose not. You see, not one. Hmm, true, I didn't see anything like that. Well done, Professor. That was a great counter-argument. Doing my job for me, gotta love it. <laughs> now that was a good observation. A good point. Order, order! Nope, time to sit for my chalice. I have another 500 of these. Pray forgive the discourtesy if I save a drop from my hollow chalice to accompany my old friend's adducing, adducing, whatever that word is. I'm just picturing, uh, What's his face? Uh, Van Zyke brought his whole case of chalices and they're just like, it's just sitting right behind the desk there. That would be the only explanation for why he has so many. Here's to you, Albert. My, fr my learned friend. Oh, you're too kind, Beric, but I'm really not a patch on you. I hope you die. No, you're not. No? Uh-oh. Coming in for the clutch. You've neglected too much more crucial possibility. I have. A particular situation in which very little bleeding would result from a stab wound. Ah, of course. I was going to say if it was left in the body. Inspector, enlighten the court, please. Yes, sir. Okay. I think I know where this might be going. M maybe. Because the only thing I can think of if we're talking about ways that you know, that there wasn't a pool of blood, was if he's gonna say that the, what if the screwdriver was left in the body? But, first of all, the picture didn't show the screwdriver, and if I think more importantly is the fact that we saw that it was at the base of the machine. So, the screwdriver wouldn't have just been left behind. Where are they going with this? But I'll let him speak, because I might be putting <laughs> false words in his mouth. Very well, you may amend your formal testimony now, Inspector Gregson. Let's see, what do you have to say to me? The weapon the victim the, vic the weapon the victim was stabbed with must have been left in his body whilst he was beamed through the air. Uh, no. So I feel like it could be... I don't think I need to even press it. I think it would either be the picture, which shows that it's not in his body at this point. But we also know that... Yeah, it was left... Found poking through the grill in the base of the machine. I'm gonna go with this. Fingers crossed. Objection! Objection! Yeah! You say that while the weapon remains in the body, there's very little bleeding. Is that unequivocal? 
Look, there was no blood on the experimentation stage, even though that's where the fellow was stabbed. The only explanation for that is if the screwdriver was still in his body, stopping any heavy bleeding. It's common medical knowledge, my learned friend. Read a book once in a while, even on your side of the world. Yes, but about the screwdriver. Why not name it Archibald or something? The thing is, we actually saw it at the scene ourselves on the experimentation stage. What? You jest. I was on the floor by the wreckage of the machine. Poking through a metal grill, I went to pick it up, but the detective here stopped me. Isn't that right, Inspector Gregson? Ah, oh, that's right. That did happen. Ah, well, um... Now you've come to mention it, yes! Inspector, are we to understand that you permitted the Defense Council to investigate? That you contravened the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act? Eh, no, not at all! I, I wouldn't do that! Time, uh, can you get me more fishing chips, please? I just let him look, nothing more! I was very clear he wasn't such a thing! Yet we did. Yes, that's true. The screwdriver was in plain sight on the stage. That shouldn't have been, should it? What? What are you getting at? If this tool had still been in the victim's body when the victim was beamed away by, f f away by the machine, then it shouldn't have still been on the stage. It should be in his body, or at the very least, it should be on the other side, or maybe even somewhere in between. The machine and the stage of it fell off while he was in the air. But if we're going off the basis that it worked the way it was intended, where he was actually like beamed, then yeah, it should be on the other side somewhere. Ah! Damn it all. I got you. That's right, it should have been beamed across to the crystal tower along with Mr. Asman. And and been found still lodged in the victim's chest. Ah! Wah! I wonder if I could have used the picture then. I don't know. Order, order! How do you explain this, Inspector? I... well, um... I don't. Heh. <laughs> Speechless, are we? Looks as though everything that the victim uh, had on his person moved with him when he was beamed. If the screwdriver was still in his chest when the instantaneous kinesis occurred... Obviously, that should have been beamed to the destination as well. You! I'll kill you! This is a strange situation. Even though people are saying that this instantaneous kinesis is a scientific impossibility, we're still basing arguments on the assumption that it did actually take place. Alright, time to tighten the screws here, haha, <laughs> if you pardon the pun. My lord, if the prosecution is unable to explain this inconsistency in its argument, we can only conclude that the testimony given in support cannot be relied upon. Hmm. Lord Van Zykes is stumped. Oh gosh! Was that hair brain? That's got it. <laughs> what was that? What was that? <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Sorry for your ears, by the way. Do you have something to say, you witness? Oh god, that really killed my voice. I'm trying to imitate him. Yes, I knew it! It bears out. The equations hold. Mr. Narahodo, don't worry. About what? Without delving into the details, there is no inconsistency. What? Okay, dude, shut up. <laughs> Even if Andrew had been lodged in Mr. Asman's chest, my trusty tool wouldn't have moved. Andrew remaining on the stage is, cons is consistent with my calculations. Oh, uh, why did you have to say that? But you know what? I get what he's saying. Because he, if he was beamed to the other side, his body would have had to disappear for a moment and then reappear, right? But that begs the question, if the if the tool was in the machine with him, wouldn't they both teleport, though? I don't know, let's see what he says. Maybe he's implying that maybe it doesn't work on, maybe it only works on living beings. Maybe you can't beam inanimate objects. But he shouldn't be saying all this. What? What? I'm so smart. Whoopsies. Your illusions have been 
shattered. Clearly, we should hear the accused explanation. Damn it all, hair brain. You really are a hair brain. Or should I say this brilliant scientist explanation? Okay, now he's a brilliant scientist, right? Hmm. Whatever. This one I found an inconsistency in the prosecution's argument. Scientists, <laughs> am I right? Very well, the defendant will testify again. Provided with a scientific explanation as to why the inconsistency asserted by the defense fails to hold. In the name of Apollo, I will, my lord. Okay. The inconsistency explained. To be clear, I'm still at a stage of gathering data in my research. My hypothesis states that the Kinesis cannot transport metal, though. Hence, the metal weapon would have stayed put. Okay. In other words, the point this raised by Mr. Narihoto isn't an inconsistency at all. Mr. Asman was the patron of my research. Without him, my work wouldn't have been possible. Now I have a duty to protect the incredible machine that we built together. Yeah, so instead of... He just wants to, uh... Protect his machine. It's a reputation. What an idiot. I mean, what a genius. So, the thrust of your testimony, Professor, is... That based upon his hypothesis, metal objects cannot be moved by this method of instantaneous kinesis. In other words... In other words, since the screwdriver is made of metal, even if it remained lodged in the victim's chest. Its subsequent discovery on the stage, despite the victim being found elsewhere, is not an inconsistency. And therefore... Oh, for God's sake, Judge. And therefore, Professor Albert Hairbrain could still have been the killer. My great hypothesis holds, you see? Yeah, congratulations. We... We had to make the cage used to contain the subject from wood for that very reason. I was not addressing you, witness! Shut up! Um, Professor Hairbrain, why are you incriminating yourself? Yes? <laughs> Whose side are you on here? I don't take sides, Mr. Narihoto. I am on the side of science. No, no, no. My only interest lies in upholding my hypothesis. I'm a scientist, after all. <laughs> it's gonna be more difficult than you thought, Ryanosuke. Is he working for us or against us? It's very hard to tell. Slam! Let's see how you cross-examine this testimony, my Nipponese friend. Yes, fire away, Mr. Narihoto. I'll try not to get in your way this time. But no promises. Oh, goodness me. This is what we have to work with. Inconsistency explained. To be clear, I'm still at the stage of gathering data in my research. Don't care. My hypothesis states that Kinesis cannot transform metal, though. Hence, the metal weapon would have stayed put. Okay. Definitely press that. Slam! You idiot! Your hypothesis states it, so this isn't proven then. No, no, of course not. It's merely a hypothesis. But a good one, based upon thousands of calculations. But it is widely known that metal can't be decomposed by electro uh, electrolysis. Yes, of course, so I am right. My hypothesis is clearly correct. What is it about incriminating himself that makes this man so happy? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, Narihoto. There's no reason that the birdcage is made of wood, you see? Sorry? The birdcage? That's, that's uh, the little cage that uh, Asman was in. Yes, that's what I call the C. C obtusa cage in which Mr. Asman was placed for the kinesis. Oh yeah, you can see it there. It is made of wood. Oh, the jail cell in which the victim was detained. It does indeed seem to be made of a t timber of some sort. I'll thank you not to refer to it as an instrument of incarceration, your lordship. Now let me take a look at this. Are we able to make the argument that something else that was metal did cross over? It doesn't look like it. Actually, his glasses, right? I don't know what they're made out of. But his glasses teleported with him, and I see... I don't know if it's metal, but I mean, I see gold looking like a chain there with gold and... The little bridge of the glasses might be made of metal. I'm not sure. In short, any weapon lodged in the victim when he was beamed away by instantaneous kinesis 
would have been left behind on the stage if it was made of metal, correct? Yes, that's it. Yes, yes, yes. It all fits perfectly with the mathematical model. But the ultimate conclusion, then, is that the defendant alone had the opportunity to inflict this fatal injury on the victim, is it not? Ah! Ah, indeed, sir. Someone beam me out of this nightmare. Beam me up, Scotty. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Hold it. Hey, ask about that. How do you come to know Mr. Asman in the first place? With this pamphlet. A year ago now, a small provincial science journal published a little paper about my work. That's a scientific journal? Good gracious. I shouldn't need new spectacles. I might have had an extraordinary hypothesis and great promise, but at the time I had no money. I, I had to eat tiny little meals in a tiny little cafe and drink watered down water out of a tiny little glass. Damn it, my life sucked. But Mr. Asman read the paper and came to visit me in my tiny little laboratory. And offered you money to help fund your work. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. I handled the theoretical side of things, and Mr. Asman provided me with the with an engineer for the practical. And the three of us produced the fantastic machine together. The machine that you brought to the Great Exhibition to demonstrate. That would be the one. We we had to apply the government for some sort of inspection to be allowed to exhibit, I think. I didn't understand all that side of things. Mr. Asman took care of it all. He was a wonderful man. Really, I owe him everything. Now I have a duty to protect the incredible machine that we built together. So far, I'm not sure. When you say that you built the machine together, does that mean you were involved in this con construction? Yes. But, well, not exactly. I'm not good with the practical side of machines myself, so the physical construction was done by an engineer. Little remains of your creation now, though. Following the explosion, repair will no doubt be impossible. Yes. Yes, I realize that. Thank you. But still. If, if someone were to gather all the broken parts, they could discover the secret of my hypothesis. But Mr. Asman and I toiled over that machine for, show, machine for so long. We put our hearts and souls into it. I have to protect our work. So what's left of the machine must be kept safe. That's only fair, because what happened was an accident. That's the extent of the testimony, then. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> I don't want him doing any more damage. He's already basically proven that he could have been the culprit. But it seems as though all he really cares about is defending his hypothesis. Still, I wonder... What if his hypothesis is just fundamentally flawed? Okay, I'm gonna try it, because I think... Yeah, like, if we show the picture... Uh, let's see... I'm just looking to see if there's anything else. Like I said, if we look at the picture itself, his glasses look like there's metal. Uh, again, I don't want to jump the gun, but... Let's try it! Objection! Objection! Okay, there we go. Professor Hairbrain, you say that according to your hypothesis, nothing made of metal can be beamed by instantaneous kinesis using the machine you made. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Spot on. Uh, exactly correct. In that case, I'd ask you to have a look at this photograph that was taken at the scene. In particular, I'd like you to pay attention to the victim's face. Aha! You can clearly see that Mr. Asman is wearing a pair of spectacles. With a metal rim. What? Metal? No! Metal can't. That's not... M metal? No! My hypothesis is wrong! You've already established that the proposed murder weapon, the screwdriver, was found on the stage. However, if your hypothesis correctly predicted that outcome, his glasses should have been left behind too. It should also have been predicted that the metal rimmed spectacles would be found in the same place. Ah! My hypothesis, my hypothesis! What would happen if, like in the case of the glasses, parts of it were metal? Would the glass parts of the, uh, of the glasses, you know, um, go and the, just the metal parts stay? I don't know. 
Professor Harebrain, this isn't easy for me to say. But your hypothesis is clearly flawed. You suck! Wah! You suck at your job! Haha, <laughs> sucks to be you. I mean, sorry about that. What are, what are, what are? Council, what is the implication of this? If on the day in question the alleged instantaneous kinesis never actually took place, then it's entirely possible that the victim was killed somewhere other than on the stage. And in that case, someone other than the defendant could have been the culprit. But, but my hypothesis, my hypothesis is sound. That's what you think. I proved it that day. The experiment was a success. The experiment was proof of all my work. If I could say something here, in my capacity as a fellow of the Royal Society. Yes, jury number four, whatever your name is, go ahead. As a man of science, there's one thing I simply cannot avoid. It's that a fraud who pretends to be a fellow man of science. What? Wait. Wait, Scott, are you suggesting my science is suspect? It's just been disproved, hasn't it? In front of all of us. I mean, that's the whole point of science. Not everything is going to be correct. You make hypotheses, hypotheses, and if it's wrong, you you keep experimenting and come up with different hypotheses. That doesn't make you a failure. In other words, the whole demonstration was a complete nonsense from start to finish. However, that is true. If you're going to do something like this, you want to make sure that it is... that it works. Believe me, my fellow jurors, when I tell you that this man is a heel, a bounder, and a fraud. I say the records of that machine should be stripped down and thoroughly examined. No! Never! That machine is the essence of my entire hypothesis! It's protected by the Special Dispensation for Scientific Ex Equipment Act. What the devil is the Blasted Act all about, eh? Who made up such a daft rule? I don't like the way this seems to be going. What's the best way for me to help the professor? Um... Um, I feel like we should wait and see in this case, because... Let's try it. Maybe I should watch and wait for the time being. My feeling is that the machine requires a thorough examination. But what about this special dispensation that's been mentioned? Oh gosh, this is all too much. It is determined that the machine itself was the murder weapon. I think you'll find the act won't apply. I got it with the murder weapon. Anyone can see that. It's plain as day. So we're all in agreement, are we? That the machine should be stripped for parts. If, if I don't do something, they'll... Objection. Okay, I guess we're objecting. Professor Herbrine has yet to perfect his invention. That would seem to be the case, yes. But even so. Even so what? Going to such trouble and expense to create a fake machine to display in public? He would have absolutely no reason to do such a thing. Slam. He had an obvious reason to do exactly that. For the research grant money. Ah! Damn it, you're right. If the government was foolish enough to have deemed the man's ridiculous notion plausible, he and his conspirators would have research received a handsome sum indeed. Conspirators? What do you want about? What would the value of such a grant? Ten pounds? You're an order of magnitude out, madam! Five hundred pounds a year! Dang, that's a lot. Oh! Oh! They could have... You could live and in that much for years! What is with people in this game and eating? The society noticed an increase in bogus public demonstrations in the field of science recently. And plenty of scientists are arguing with each other to get the largest slice of the funding cake. People's greed is plenty of motive enough for murder, I assure you. I mean, that's certainly a common motive. No, no, no. I haven't deceived anyone. Least of all the government. My hypothesis is sound. The science is sound. Trust the science. Please, you must believe me. Objection. <laughs> if you've learned anything the past two years, trust the science. Always. Never question it. No matter how unbelievable this hypothesis may seem to you, ladies and gentlemen, the fact remains that the victim was transported instantly to the crystal tower. Which means that the experiment was a success. 
I still think there's gotta be another explanation than an alternate an alternate explanation. Ah, Barak, my friend who would never disappoint me. And therefore, the only person who could possibly have committed this murder is the accused. Ah, Barak. <laughs> Where is this heading? I have no idea. My lord, if I may. Yes, Lord Van Zykes? The prosecution would like to summon new witnesses to the stand. New witnesses? What would be the nature of their involvement? They were spectators of the demonstration at the exhibition, who were occupying special seats. Eyewitnesses? Very well. The court grants the prosecution's request. I should very much like to hear from my witnesses to the incident. The prosecution's stance is clear. This experiment was no postiche. The accused killed the financier victim there on the public stage before the very eyes of the spectators. Now, my learned friend. Oh, yes? It's time for you to make your own stance clear. There's clearly a flaw in the professor's hypothesis. I can definitely see that. Where does that leave me? We shall take a short recess now! During which time, the prosecution will prepare its new witnesses to take the stand. Oh, are we really getting it? Are we getting it to be continued already, or...? As you wish, my lord. Good. In that case, court is adjourned for 20 minutes. Really? There we go, to be continued. Okay, that was a that was a nice somewhat concise episode. Usually these are pretty long parts. Okay. Short and sweet, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> okay, that was that was good. So hair brain You gotta stop. <laughs> you gotta stop. Oh man. It's, it's clear as it goes on, like, he's, he's torn, I guess, because obviously, I'm sure he doesn't want to be found guilty, but his pride in his, you know, in his invention, in his work, is causing, even if it incriminates him, he can't, he can't let it go, you know, so he, he noticed that inconsistency, instead of saying, oh, thinking it through, I mean, he's a, he's supposed to be a smart man, a scientist, instead of letting it go, he's like, he's like, no, that's not how it would work, I gotta let them know, it's like, He's doing more harm than good for his case, but it's getting good. It's getting interesting. So we now know that there was a stab wound involved. I still think that it might not be that the machine worked. Like I said, two separate incidences where maybe somebody somebody else dropped somehow dropped Asmin's body through the, the crystal tower. And, you know, I don't know. Maybe there's a wax figure put in its place in the actual machine. I don't know. I'm still going off of that. We don't... The wax figure hasn't come up at all, so I could be completely wrong about the point of that. I don't know if they're gonna... Ever, I don't know if they're ever gonna find it. They probably will at some point. But yeah, good start. I'm not sure who these witnesses might be. I don't think it's gonna be Trustbell. I don't think she was at the... At the thing or had anything to do with it. Other than her, I can't really think of any other people. The... The, uh, jur What is he? Juror number six is, uh... The policeman, so it won't be him. The policeman from Miss Trustbell, so... I don't know. These might be new witnesses. But we'll find out next time. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you know more videos go up. And of course, share the video on the channel with your friends, family, and loved ones. I appreciate you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night, whatever time it is for you. And I'll see you next time. So take care and bye-bye.